Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 15 of the Beginner to Master Speedrun. Uh, I know the last one was just a single game in episode 14. I'll try and make up for that today with more games. And coming into today, my rating is 981. Uh, so I am hoping to break 1000 ELO. I've switched my profile picture to a photo of myself. I don't know what year this was, maybe 2003, 2004. So this is some tournament I, I won a medal. So hopefully I can win uh, at least the prize of breaking 1000 ELO today. Now let's hop into it. I'll join the 10 minute pool playing Boric Balak and I'll play E4. And I'm sticking with the same opening repertoire that I've been playing thus far in the series. It's also the same opening repertoire I used to play when I was younger. Very classic Italian. Uh, usually Bach will choose between knight f6 or bishop c5 here. Those are the two main moves. In d6, it's a little bit passive because uh, it blocks in the bishop, but it's playable. Uh, this is what we can call uh, perhaps a, a delayed Philidor. Philidor is uh, d6 on move 2. So I'll just continue developing knight c3. Hope there's sound. She didn't troubleshoot the, the move sounds, but yeah, hopefully it's working. We see bishop g4. Uh, I'm going to play h3 here. Now there is a possible trap that black could fall into from this position. Uh, bishop h5 is like the most natural move to maintain the pin. But as far as I know, bishop h5 is a tactical mistake. And it would be nice if uh, we see this move. Yeah, now it's been a while since I've looked at this line, so I want to make sure that the tactics are working. I'm pretty sure they are. I'm going to take the pawn and say, oh no, my queen, someone call an ambulance. But probably not for me. Ah. Uh, this is a, the classic Legal's checkmate. If black takes a queen, then white's mating in two with bishop f7. And yeah, we're going to see this play out. So king e7 and knight to d5 will be checkmate. I will have some explaining to do, because uh, there were some other lines that would not lose immediately for black. Um, but that's a, a nice start to the episode. A lot of people are challenging me, um, but we'll hold off for now. So yeah, this is a classic one. And this might be like the most common way to get the Legal's checkmate. But there's a lot of different openings that kind of feature the same pattern. So I first want to note that the reason why I play h3 and not immediately knight takes e5 is here, okay, of course, if black takes a queen, it's the same made in two. Uh, but black could take on e5 with a knight. And this is just bad for white because I'm just losing a piece. My queen's still attacked, and bishop's defended, my bishop's attacked, and white's not getting anything. So h3 was crucial to provoke the bishop to h5. And then after takes, you might be wondering, what if the knight just takes here, hitting the bishop on c4. And it still works for white because after takes, I can take the bishop. And after knight takes c4, white is temporarily down a piece, but there is a move here for white to regain the piece. Uh, and if you want to try and find it, feel free to pause the video. But the move is queen to b5. And this is a nice, nice use of the geometry of the board. Uh, double attacking the knight and the king. And after this, this white is happily up a pawn. Um, so it did take a lot of work to, to win the center pawn, but it's a very nice tactical sequence. And I imagine there's been probably thousands of games that have featured this line, uh, probably across Lee Chess and Chess.com. So, um, yeah, I hope I explained everything there. Uh, if you have any more questions about this line, feel free to leave them below. 
I will note that uh, probably taking is a better move or retreating. Um, but if takes, I'd be happy to take and then threaten mate. And yeah, life is still good here for white. So um, let's move on. New game. Playing Ismail Lurden. Raven 952. If I win this game, I'll gain eight rating points. So inching my way closer. We'll play knight c6. And we'll have a, a more standard Italian. In this case, okay, I was going to say that I don't play d6 because I want my bishop more active. White's going for a fried liver, but this just hangs a knight. Um, I'm wondering if white maybe will try this move. Which does look scary, because it hits the queen and hits the bishop. But I'm going to take the pawn on g2. Counterattack in the rook. White doesn't have time to take the bishop. And meanwhile, yeah, the rook and the pawn are now attacked. And this is just a, an opening disaster for white. So I won that game even quicker than the first one. This is feeling like a, a real speed run now. A two games in. Uh, still less than 10 minutes of recording. Let's just go again. Rated 997. This might be the final game my rating is in the, the three digits. I'm craving a fourth digit. So we have the same opening, same Italian. Okay, so here I'm not going to play knight g5. Uh, as we, we learned from the previous game. Um, I'll just play d3. It's one of the most classical moves. Getting ready to activate the bishop. Here I'll start with knight to c3. We have the four knights. This does have um, kind of a, a symmetrical nature, but with black casting kingside, uh, I don't have to castle so soon, and I'm going to start with bishop g5. I'm pretty sure I've had similar openings in, in previous games of the speedrun. The idea is to very simply play knight d5 and attack the pinned knight. I'm pretty sure this is a mistake. Like Even though it's one of the most standard moves for black in this opening, uh, the problem now is the knight's attacked twice, and the bishop can't retreat to break the pin. I'm pretty much guaranteed to take at some point and ruin the pawn structure for black on the king side. So my opponent like did follow basic principles, like castled early, developed, does have peace harmony. But uh, yeah, against this plan from white, black's position is, is already not so great. It's possible I've had the same position. I remember one game several episodes ago that featured something very similar. Okay, Bach is going for the same idea of maybe going for knight d4. Uh, there's a few differences, though. First of all, I could play c3, preventing knight d4. Also, I've not committed to casting, so I probably don't want to castle kingside so soon. Of course, I could start with taking either way. Like one idea is to take with a knight, pawn takes, and then bishop h6, which looks appealing. I could play h3, kick the bishop back, and then maybe go for g4. Yeah, there's definitely some forcing options to consider. I could also start with c3, and then kind of just put the ball back in Black's court. I'm going to slow play. I'm going to play c3. Um, I mean, it's possible that h3 or knight takes f6 were, were better moves, but um, I think this is just a very useful move in preventing the knight from activating. Also, in some cases, I want to play pawn b4 and expand. I don't really see how black can kind of get out of the quagmire that they're in, because a move like h6 will lose a pawn. After h6 and this pawn is overworked, I can take, take, and then take. Knight e7 does break the pin, but it, it leaves the knight less defended. Um, and now it's a question, do I want to take 
with the knight or with the bishop first. Both moves are very attractive. I mean, if I take with the bishop, then if pawn takes, knight takes, I'm winning the bishop on g4. But if I take with knight first, takes, takes, I maintain the pin, and then I have the plan of checkmating just by bringing the queen in. Yeah, I'm going to go for the mating idea. I'm going to take here first. I mean, both moves, I think, were pretty crushing for white. But I think this will lead to a quicker win. The king is completely stuck. Bishop, Bishop is so strong on f6. And I mean, I'm already threatening queen d2 and getting the queen in. So my opponent, like, honestly didn't make too many glaring mistakes in this game, especially for this rating level. Like, there wasn't an obvious blunder. It was more just um, not being aware of the danger from early on, walking into this, uh, this very powerful plan. After this game, I'll, I'll share what Black could have done better. And this position is already pretty close to force mate. Like the threat is is not queen g5 because knight g6, but the threat is actually queen h6. And then queen g7 will be pretty much unstoppable. Yeah, very typical mating pattern. I guess there's one move to delay the mate, one spike check. I mean, this game brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. Because like the first couple years I was playing chess, this is like one of the main strategies I went for in a lot of games, like bishop g5 and knight d5. And it took me several years to actually learn what black should do to not get into so much trouble from early on. So my opponent is taking time here. Can't blame them. Like Sometimes when the position is hopeless, you still want to take your time and see if there's any last resources but yeah there's there's no running there's no hiding okay so we do see the spite check but now there's no more spite checks and like if i want to i could pre-move queen g7 actually i might as well just so I don't mouse slip. Okay, um, nice game. That was the longest game so far this episode. I broke 1,000. And yeah, I mean, I, I think d6 was a, like the first kind of big mistake. Even though the engine says this is playable, if we go back, like, I think in this position, black needs to be very careful. Like, maybe one of the best moves is bishop e7. Like, even though the bishop is a bit more passive here, it does prevent white's idea of knight d5. And, uh, yeah, completely diffuses a pin. Uh, another approach, sometimes what players will do is just h6, preventing bishop g5 entirely. And then, then black can continue with g6 and castle and not have to worry about the same ideas. Um, but yeah, hopefully some lessons to take away from my opponent. If we go forward with what happened in the game, yeah, after c3, I mean, black was still alive here. Like the engine, engine says white's only slightly better. Uh, bishop e6 would have been the best move to challenge the knight, get ready to take the knight on d5. And then here, I mean, I probably would have taken and then takes and then bishop h6. But black is still alive here. Like, it's it's hard to generate mating ideas immediately. And uh, the game would go on from here. So uh, I've officially broken 1,000. Um, do I keep it going? I ride the momentum. Let's keep it going. Let's play a few more, or at least one more. I do want to deliver a, a longer episode, especially for the holidays.
There were a lot of comments the previous episode of people kind of upset that I only featured one game. So, uh, okay, let's let's start with Knight C6. The Stafford Gambit was in my muscle memory. Uh, so we'll have a scotch. It's the beginning of the scotch opening. Oh, this idea. Isn't this like a famous like TikTok trap where a lot of players play h6 and then knight takes f7 and then king takes and then queen. Wait a minute. Queen h5. I definitely saw this on like I think it was TikTok. Like, there's some trend of like all these channels sharing this weird trap. I can't remember if h6 is a good move or just losing. But I don't think I want to play h6 because of like these these ideas of bishop c4 and queen h5. So, yeah, I remember like studying this in depth a few months ago and just laughing at how ridiculous this, this opening is. But I think, I think I'll just play a normal developing move. Like this should be fine. And then if bishop c4, I can play knight e5. Attacking and defending. I'm definitely going to have to like research this opening afterwards. I will say knight g5, it violates a lot of principles in the opening, like moving the same piece twice away from the center. But um, I'm pretty sure that it had a venomous trap if, if black is not careful. But it is somewhat of um, a, a hope chest type move. Like white's hoping that I, I go wrong. And assuming I don't go wrong, I'm uh, I'm up a pawn here. I'm not concerned about f7 being a target because okay, if takes, I take with knight and white's not going to have enough there. Wow, white counterattacks my knight. So both knights are attacked here. But what I can do is take the bishop first. And then once the queen takes back, then I'll take the knight. Looks like I'm winning a piece. So white takes on f7. Yeah, this is um, somewhat of an in-between move. My king will be a little bit more exposed. And this, this is a triple attack. White's hitting... My king and both of these pawns, queen and bishop target c7. I think d5 is a move to go for. Because that way I'm just going for some central liquidation. I'm also opening up my bishop. I don't mind if queen takes c7. Like We would trade queens and then I win the pawn on e4. Queen takes d4 is possible, and then I can't take because of the pin. Even though there's a line where I win back material. Okay, but we see pawn takes d5. And now if I take with queen, white could take this pawn with check. But then bishop d7. I think a, an important thing to note here is black is, is doing a very nice job of controlling the center. Like I have a bit more development, even though my king is a bit precarious. Uh, there's just such nice control over like most squares in the position. And now I have a choice, I mean, maybe just rook to c8 which almost traps a queen. I think the only safe square is queen e5. I'm up a piece, so I might as well go for a queen trade. And perhaps at some point I can win the pawn on c2. I'm trying to calculate here. If queen e5, I could take the queen immediately, or I could take the pawn first. 
which might be preferable. Opponent's taking time here, like searching for other options, but I'm pretty sure this is the only move. And maybe we'll see c4, but in, in most cases I should be winning, winning a pawn and trading queens. Yeah, so if I take on c2, then I give white the move, but my queen's defended. Queen's not going anywhere either. I mean, if white wants to avoid the trade, there's queen e1, but I wouldn't mind seeing that. I guess there's also queen b8 there. Okay, we see knight d2. Now this is a blunder because after takes, the bishop is overworked. I can take the knight. Now black is up. A knight and a bishop. Pawns are equal, but knight and bishop is a nice material advantage. And let's not slow down. Let's win more material. Yeah, the tactics keep coming. Yeah, we're seeing a downward spiral. This is very common in chess when one side has lost a, a bit of material, it's common for them to just kind of lose even more. You just have more pieces to generate tactics with. So I'm still very curious about this opening. If, if I was supposed to play h6, I think I'm happy with what I did. Like knight f6 was a more practical move in the opening. There's really no way to save the rook here. Or is there? Maybe maybe there is rook d1. Because then if I take, it's just a trade of rooks. Rook d1, rook e2, then white can save the rook and the bishop. Let's see, takes first. Now if I take the bishop, I mean, everything is winning here, but I think it's better to take the rook first. Ensuring that I'm winning material. And now I'm up a rook and a bishop. And white resigns. Okay. So, I mean, with a lot of these games, it's it's usually a matter of, of me sharing some, some lessons afterwards. But in this game, I'm going to use Stockfish to, to get a lesson of my own. Because knight g5, what I remember is h6 takes, takes. And I'm pretty sure there's a line like bishop c4. And then like the most natural move is king e8. And then white's winning with this sequence. Here, 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 here. Like bishop f4. Some crazy... Crazy line where the king just walks up and gets mated. So I have the eval bar on. Engine says h6 is okay for black. Because after takes, takes bishop c4. Ah, so the best move in this position is king g6. Which looks kind of ridiculous to walk the king up. But the point is to hide the king on h7. And white can attack, but there's no there's no way to like get a mating that as white. Bishop f7 looks scary, but then probably knight e7 or queen f6. And if queen f5, it's very close to mate, but there's g6 and then bishop g7, and black is surviving. So, yeah, for anyone that encounters this opening, like Scotch with knight g5, uh, you could play h6 with the understanding that you have to play king g6 in this position. Okay, d5 or king e7 are apparently are also playable. Just don't play king e8. But uh, what I played knight f6 in the game is also very fine. And... Um, 
yeah, black is, is slightly better here. Uh, and then going forward, just go forward all the way. Yeah, I think everything was under control of this game. So um, I think I'll end it here. Past a thousand had some some interesting openings this uh, episode. Had the the Legal's mate. Had some pretty quick games. This last one was a, a nice lesson. So do stay tuned for the next episode. If you have questions, leave them below. Thank you everyone for watching. If you like the content, like and subscribe. It does help the channel. And I'll see you guys soon.